Hey, we have here today a really interesting integral from the Berkeley Integration B 2020. This was problem number four. We have the integral from zero to two pi of the min of sine x or cos x over the max function of e sine x or e cos x. Don't forget the dx. To get started with this, we really need to just get a feeling for this min and max function and what we have inside here. Now, the nice thing is we have this similarity that we both have, we have sine in both these and we have cosine in both these. Let's take a look at a really rough graph for a moment. Now you notice with this graph, I really didn't take any time at all to get this accurate, because it really doesn't matter in this case. We're just trying to break this up into different sections where we have a min and a max. We don't need precise values here, so that's why I kind of just did whatever with the sketch. But the key thing here is we want to know where are these intersection points. Because when we have an intersection, this is where we can break up our integral or break up our bounds into different integrals. And so what's going to happen is in each of these areas, we're going to, there's going to be a min value and a max value of these two functions. So let's say in this first region where there's some intersection point, this value up here, our top curve is going to be our max function. And then this lower curve is going to be our min function. And then it's going to switch and this is going to be our max and this is going to be our min. So really all we need to know is we need to know these intersection points. And then we need to know what is going to be the max and what is going to be the min in each region. And of course, we could look at a real precise graph and get these intersection points. But what I can tell you is for first to get an intersection point for just sine x and cos x, we just need to find out where is sine x equal to cos x. And that's going to happen at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 within, the, within this range from 0 to 2 pi. And that's just because you notice that these functions at pi over 4, that value is going to be 1 over square root of 2 over square root of 2 over 2. And then for 5 pi over 4, they're both minus square root of 2 over 2. And then from there, we just need to do the same exact thing with e sine x. Where is e sine x equal to e cos x? Well, it turns out that it's the exact same points, which makes sense because we're just putting these values in the exponent. Even though the graphs of e sine x and e cos x have a little bit of a different shape than sine x and cos x, of course, but the graphs end up being really similar because we have the same intersection points and we have the same kind of, the min and max is going to be the same in the same places. Okay, so now I've split up the integral into three integrals based on those intersection points that we found on the last board, right? We found the intersection to be at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So that's how we split each of these up. And then you may want to know, how did I find that the min value in this region, sine x, and the max value is e cos x? Well, you can find out which functions to use just by looking at a graph or by testing at some values within this range. So let's just do this. So for example, like in this region here, we could look at pi over 6 as a point. So like sine at pi over six is going to be actually one half, but cosine at pi over six is gonna be square root of three over two, which I think is around 0 0.866. And of course one half is like 0 0.5. And so of course 0 0.866 is greater than 0 0.5. So we're saying that the cosine value is gonna be greater in this region. So like in the numerator, we're looking for the min value. Well, the min value is gonna be sine x because this value is less than the 0 0.866, so we took the sine x to be the min, and then in that region, the cosine value is gonna be the max, that's greater than 0 0.5. And again, like we found in the last board, the intersection point is the same for either of these functions, so we'll use e cosine x for the max in this region. And then it just switches where here in this region, our min value is gonna be cosine of x, and our max value is gonna be sine x, or e sine x in the denominator here. And then at five pi over four, it just switches back, and we have the same function here as we do here in the first region. So from here, all we really need to do is integrate in order to finish this off, and it's gonna be pretty easy. So, so let's just deal with this second integral first. So for our u substitution, I'm gonna make my u equal to sine x, and then du is gonna be cosine x dx, and that's exactly what we have in the numerator. So that one's gonna be pretty easy. And then for this other one, we'll do the same substitution on both these. We'll do, I'll call my, we'll do a v substitution. I'll call my v equal to cosine x, and then dv is gonna be minus sine x dx. Well, we don't have the minus, but I'm just going to create it there to make this convenient. So we'll have a minus in front of both these, but so I'm not changing it. We'll bring a minus out front of the integral. So for this first one, let's do the bound. So, so first plugging in pi over 4, cosine of pi over 4, we're going to write it as 1 over square root of 2. And then cosine of 0 is going to be just 1. And then, of course, our numerator is going to be this dv value, and it's just going to be over e to the v. Okay, then for the second one, we take 5 pi over 4, and we plug it in here. Sine of 5 pi over 4 is going to be minus... 1 over square root of 2, and then at pi over 4, it's just going to be 1 over square root of 2. In this one, again, we're going to have our du in the numerator, so it's just going to be du over e to the u. And then for this last one, we're going to use the same substitution here. So we're going to take a 2 pi and plug it in for x. Cosine of 2 pi is going to give me 1 for my upper bound. And then 5 pi over 4, cosine at 5 pi over 4 
is gonna be minus one over square root of two. And again, because this is the exact same integral as this one, we're gonna have the same thing as we have here. So this is gonna be dv over e to the v. Then before we integrate, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna swap the bounds on this one just to be polite. So we'll change that from a plus and we'll change this one to a minus and I'll bring a minus out front. And then for each of these, what I can do is bring it into the numerator and write it as e to the minus v, e to the minus u, e to the minus v. And now I think we're good to integrate this thing. Okay, now at this point we have the exact same integral in each case, and this is gonna be pretty easy, right? So when we integrate this, for each of these, we're gonna have just minus e to the minus v, or in this case, minus e to the minus u. But now for each of these, you notice we have a minus up front of the integral, so we can use that to cancel that, and we'll just have a plus e to the minus u or v in each case, and we just need to evaluate all these. Okay, so we'll start by plugging in this one over square root of two, and we're gonna have e to the minus one over square root of two. Then we're gonna have here a minus e to the minus one, then for this one, we're gonna have an e to the minus one over square root of two minus, and then here we're gonna have an e to the plus one over square root of two. It's just keeping all the pluses and minuses straight at this point. And then for this last one, we're gonna have e to the minus one, and then we're gonna have minus e to the plus, minus times minus is plus one over square root of two. Well, e to the minus one is the same as one over e, but this, is gonna, this one's gonna cancel with this one. So adding these two, we're gonna have two e to the minus one over square root of two, and then here I'm gonna have a minus two e to the one square root of two. But then I'm gonna rearrange this. I think I'm gonna factor a minus two out of this and we'll see what's gonna happen. So if I take a minus two out, then we can write this as e to the one over square root of two, and then we'll have a minus e to the minus one over square root of two. But what you'll notice is this is actually starting to look a lot like cinch or hyperbolic sine. What I just need to do is I need to divide it by two to get it in that form. And now we're in the right form, but I don't wanna change it, so I'm gonna multiply it by two. So out front, we're gonna have minus four. And so this thing right here is actually gonna be our cinch function. And then I just need to notice the input to this. So our input is the exponent on the e, so it's actually gonna be one over square root of two. So I'll just write this as one over square root of two, and that's it. So that's it, I think it was a pretty good problem from Berkeley 2020, so we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching, have a great day.